Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTQB Specialist Performance Testing Certification. We are getting started with the very first chapter of our certification which is called as Basic Concepts and as a part of this chapter we will be covering several topics at the basic and layman level which is to get started and understand what exactly performance testing is all about, what are the basic principles and type of performance testing which can be performed in order to achieve the desired performance of an application also talking about the testing types which can be organized and conducted under performance testing the concept of load generation how exactly is being performed and uh, how does you really apply load on the system in order to test it and common failures in performance testing and their causes which will help you to be uh, enabling yourself to be a troubleshooter and also be aware of the common issues which we generally find as a part of the performance test in this tutorial we're getting started with the number one thing that is principles and concepts which will talk about the basic outline of performance testing to get started of course we have to define the word performance testing which is the most important and most layman level thing to talk about any certification and here we are talking about a domain which stands for performance testing of an application the word performance basically does not have a definition altogether what exactly is performance when you talk about using a gadget you talk about using a product and it's all about that experience what a user gets by using a particular product or application is what you call it as performance, right? Because if I am mean, using a particular phone or maybe a laptop or something and that does not behave well when I need it or probably at certain point of time it stops behaving properly or it's not accessible at all due to certain criteria like resource which it is utilizing, uh, probably the number of users being logged into that particular application I feel bad about it and that's what is basically an experience which comprises of the performance of an application so here we're just trying to tell you that an application when it comes to the software industry the application the performance plays a critical role about it in terms of the quality characteristics of an application as performance is one of the non-functional parameters of an application and uh, does fall under the quality characteristics if in case an application performance is poor you do not prefer to make use of it and of course there are a lot of competitive other applications which can be an alternate solution to that additionally evaluation of the functional suitability usability and other quality characteristics under condition of load will be tested like performance just not limited to performance like uh, the response time stability and uh, number of transactions being placed the number of users working on it there are some additional things which can be uh, combined together when you talk about testing the performance on application and that includes suitability usability and many other things which relates to it Performance testing is not limited to a web-based domain. Generally, people feel that uh, you know performance testing is all about testing a web-based application for its performance because that's something which is common and accessed by people from different geographical region. But it can it be applied equally to the same like a mobile application or if you talk about the desktop applications which is shared and people access it from different locations. So it's just not limited to a web-based application it can be for desktop it can be a mobile based application it can be a database it could be a shared repository any such thing which you are accessing and many other with you are accessing that is a good candidate of performance testing product quality model as a non-functional quality characteristics with the three sub characteristics displayed you know in the next slide it will be discussed here to understand that what are the key parameters which we generally consider when it comes to the performance testing and generally we you know measure an application for these three parameters so let's have a quick look on the same here so the three major parameters what we generally try to consider as a part of uh, the performance testing is time behavior resource utilization and capacity now what is time behavior generally the evaluation of time behavior is the most common performance testing objective this aspect of the performance testing examines the ability of component or system to respond to the users or system inputs within a specified time and under specified condition this entire sentence can be referred to just one word called as response time 
So generally, uh, performance is very much worried about the response time uh, of an application when a client places a request. So if I'm talking about a relationship between the client and server, client generally operates something on an application and clicks a button, a request is being sent to the server and the server processes that request and responds back to you by showcasing the next screen. Now, of course, this time which is taken to do this job is called as response time and we always thrive to achieve as minimum as possible as response time of the application because we want to give you the great experience when it comes to performance testing and I, I, I just want to make sure that it is as low as possible so that you don't have to wait for a longer duration probably you know we do have so much time in the world but no time when you start working on something and you feel that oh this thing is not working fine and that's where the response time has to be reduced as much as possible even in worst conditions like we have different scenarios to be testing this and we want to make sure that the number of users uh, even if they are peak it does respond well and does not crash mainly you know while responding to multiple users that's where the next thing comes when it comes to the resource utilization if the availability of the system resources is identified as a risk the utilization of those resources including the ram and other things may be investigated by conducting specific performance tests now Response time is one of the factor, but of course the other parameter is the resource utilization. It does completely depend on the resource and the environment or infrastructure, what you are using for that particular application. Because if you don't have enough resource to accommodate that many users, your system will behave slow or sometime may not respond at all, right? So that's where we feel bad about when the system does not respond at all, or they say that Right now we are busy and cannot be you know, reached or not available or crashed. The other one is capacity. If the issues of the system behavior at the required capacity limits of the system, like the number of users or amount of data being uploaded is identified as a risk, performance tests may be conducted to evaluate the suitability of the system architecture. Now the system architecture is something which basically allows a particular count of people to work on it. Now, there are two things here, just not the users, but also the volume of data. If you look at some of the social networking websites like you know, Instagram, Facebook, quite often we upload pictures, right? And we don't worry about like the picture which we uploaded 10 years ago is uh, still there. And uh, we are not worried about deleting that, right? So imagine the amount of data which you are uploading to the particular server every single day. How does the system behave when you actually go for logging in or creating something new when you log in today? Right right from the past 10 years, you have been uploading things, but the system does not behave uh, differently saying that, come on, you have a lot of things and I can take some time to respond to you. No, because they have created the architecture in such a way that not all your images of the 10 years will be loaded as soon as you try to log in or as soon as you land on the home page. So the things are broken into different pages that if only you access those, then we load those images for you. So making your experience amazing and making sure that though you have a huge amount of data with you, number of users are being logged in, but the load is completely handled. So capacity comes from the point of number of users being signed in or using that application simultaneously or in intervals and the amount of data being loaded on the system. So performance testing often takes the form of experimentation. That's a big thing to understand about performance testing, that it is not about something which we are sure about. Unlike unit and integration testing and system testing, performance testing is more about running different and weird scenarios to just see that what if we have such things happening in the real world? And I want to make sure that it does not crash us in any of these situations. So we come up with different and uh, wild scenarios to run. And we try to see the behavior of the system in under these scenarios and make sure that it works pretty well, even in these kind of scenarios, whatever we are trying to do. And these may be conducted iteratively, that means repeatedly, in support of system analysis, design and implementation to enable architectural design to be made and to help shape stakeholders' expectations. So it's just not a one-time activity. A particular test which is being executed can definitely be repeated different number of times to make sure that any change, any improvements does not impact the existing. So more from the point of regression, but 
not from the point of regression again. Like performance is something which is not a just one-time execution. You generally repeat that because you never know. Today it's working fine, but tomorrow it may fail. So I need to make sure that things are working in different time zones, different scenarios, different user behaviors, and all sort of things. So all the three above quality sub-characteristics will impact the ability of the system under test to scale. Now, scale basically stands for whether it can be improvised or increased with the stamina or not. Further to add, uh, the following performance testing principles are particularly relevant. So here we are highlighting some of the performance testing principles which need to be followed. But of course, there are a lot of other things which need to be taken into account when testing the performance of an application. Test must be aligned to the defined expectations of the different stakeholder groups, in particular users, system designers, and operation staff, because these are the core users who will be making use of it, and I must be looking into their expectations and must be completely aligned as per their needs and expectation. The test must be reproducible, stat statically uh, identical results must be obtained by reporting the test on an unchanged system. Third, the test must yield results that are both understandable and can be readily compared to stakeholder expectations. So whatever analysis approach you make use of must be in such a way that it is measurable in terms of accuracy or in terms of precision, making sure that the expectations are met and all sort of such things. The test can be also conducted where resources allow either on complete or partial systems or test environments that are representatives of the production system. Now, not always possible that you will have a real-time uh, environment right from the beginning. Of course, you do get some chance to conduct it on a real-life system, but of course, the environment is always a challenge to start your performance test much earlier in the life cycle. So no matter when you start performance testing in your entire development model, but you try to be as close as possible to the real-time environment. That gives you a better coverage and confidence about the performance behavior. So the test must be conducted in these kind of uh, infrastructure, which is close to the real-time environment. And the last one is the test must be practically affordable and executable within the time frame set of the project. Now, of course, that everyone can understand that performance testing is something which is quite expensive and unaffordable. That means you may not be able to invite a lot of users to do that practically in your environment. Plus, you cannot have that infrastructure as per the project budget to conduct that realistically. So that's where we try to uh, assume and understand things so that you have a proper tool, proper uh, you know, setup done in terms of environment and number of virtual users. So you do try to uh, set up things according to the budget and whatever you do must be affordable because generally people go out of their budget when it comes to uh, non-functional testing. So make sure that that's one of the principle to be taken into account before you start and conduct these things. So that's more important. So that was all from this particular tutorial team. We just covered a basic understanding of what is performance testing and the principles of the same. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.